Okay, so hello everyone. I'm uh, Fabien Chouteau. This is uh, Corentin. Uh, so first, I'm going to celebrate the uh, 20 years of uh, FOSDEM by showing off my uh, 10 years old vintage T-shirt. <laughs> uh, and so yes, I am. I am actually that old. Um, so uh, BSP generator for more than 3,000 ARM uh, microcontrollers. Actually. When I wrote the title, I didn't check, but it's more than 4,000 now. Um, so what, what is this about? Uh, first, we're going to start with uh, some context, uh, and then uh, Quentin will explain what, what the, actually the, the project is. Uh, so the context is that we work for an open source software company uh, called Ada Core. We do uh, open source uh, software development tools. <coughs> Uh, so uh, we contribute to uh, GCC, GDB. We have uh, IDs, uh, co code coverage analysis, formal verification, so on and so forth. Uh, and so in particular for the ADA and Spark uh, programming languages. Uh, and one of the, the targets and the context that we support for our uh, customer and user is the uh, really uh, bare metal embedded uh, platforms. Uh, and so we are uh, independent from uh, any uh, hardware vendors, and uh, you will see why this, is, this can be a, pr a problem sometimes. Um, so very quickly, the uh, Eden Spark programming languages. Uh, so it's, uh, Ada is a language that is really designed for uh, functional safety, uh, and that's why it's uh, heavily used in uh, the uh, safety critical domain, so avionics, space, railway, uh, and, and uh, automotive now as well. Um, and uh, so some of the useful uh, key features are strong typing. Uh, so yeah, ADA is, is a strong type language, but what's most important is that you have the, the capability to define very precisely your own types. Uh, so that's ranges, for instance, is one example. Uh, we also now have uh, contract-based programming. Uh, and uh, one interesting feature that we will talk about later is the representation clauses, which uh, let you really precisely control the representation of your data uh, at the hardware level. Uh, and Spark, so Spark is a subset of the ADA language with uh, tools for uh, formal verification. So you can have uh, mathematical proof that your software is uh, correct. Um, and so another piece of the context is the uh, market of ARM microcontrollers. And so that's, that's only ARM. You can also consider other uh, architecture. Uh, so there is dozens of vendors, uh, eight different uh, architecture variants. I think that's only eight so far, but maybe there are, there are more. And of course, you have thousands and thousands of different uh, parts. Uh, and so for instance, can anyone tell me uh, how many uh, like how many uh, RAM there is in an HT32F22366 or uh, MB9AF155M. Um, and so that's, that's the kind of problem that we have when uh, users come to us and say, oh, do you support the uh, S6E2CC8HOA? Well, OK, that's, that's kind of difficult. Um, so. If we uh, let dive a little bit uh, deeper, if we look just at one of those microcontrollers, uh, so STM32F446RET6, uh, it's, uh, it's a beast. You have uh, 46 uh, peripherals in there. Uh, to control those 46 uh, peripherals, you have uh, more than uh, 800 memory mapped registers. Uh, and in those registers, you have more than 6,000 uh, fields that you have to um, uh, program. And so the question for us, since we are uh, providing tools for, an, let's say, an alternative programming language, so alternative means uh, everything that is not C and C++, uh, <coughs> how can we um, actually provide uh, drivers for this kind of uh, architecture and for all the complexity of the, the ecosystem and the market. <clears throat> and so 
in particular, what we are uh, looking at is uh, the, like, the basic blocks to get started. Uh, and so for us, that means uh, the linker script and the startup code uh, that will be different for every microcontroller, mostly uh, because of the different architecture and also the memory layout. So depending on how much RAM or flash do you have, uh, the, the, for instance, the linker script will be, will be different. Uh, and also driver, uh, drivers, if, uh, if possible. Um, and so, lucky uh, for us, we have uh, ARM to the, to the rescue. Uh, um, so I don't know exactly when, but some years ago, ARM started... Uh, it's a bit difficult to describe what this is, actually. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an initiative, it's a program called the Cortex uh, Microcontroller Software Interface Standard. So CMCs for the, uh, for the happy few. Uh, and so there's many, many things in this, uh, under this, this name. Uh, so for instance, there's the, the DAP. So it's um, more or less some kind of standardized um, uh, hardware debugging probe interface. Uh, that's what you get, for instance, if you if you plug a, uh, I think, um, a microbit development board, uh, you see a USB flash drive, and you can just drag and drop program to it. Uh, I think that's some of the stuff that is defined with, uh, with the DAP. Uh, the driver is a um, uh, C um, driver uh, API, in a way, uh, so that uh, hardware vend vendors are supposed to implement and provide for their microcontrollers. Uh, but they don't uh, always do that. Um, there is also the, more or less the same uh, concept, but for a uh, real-time uh, operating system. So again, an, an API to uh, basically provide, uh, or try to provide some kind of portability. Uh, and then you have uh, interesting uh, libraries, actually. So there's a neural network uh, library uh, specifically for Cortex-M. Uh, there's uh, also a DSP uh, library, and I forgot to put it, but they also they also have a uh, some kind of uh, file system dedicated for um, for microcontrollers as well. So this is uh, you know very interesting, but that's actually not the most interesting for us um, because the other the rem remaining part of uh, CMCs uh, are the the CMC packs. Uh, so. In the general sense, it's just a way to distribute um, software packages. Uh, but what's interesting is the, is the, the data inside. Uh, and so in particular, we will look at two kind of files, uh, the PDSC and the SVD. Uh, and so I have to explain that actually the, the CMC spec are provided by the hardware vendors. So HARM uh, is, is defining uh, uh, more or less the structure and the, and the data uh, format, but it's provided by the vendors. Uh, and so in the, in the PDSC, uh, what, we, what we will uh, be interested in is a uh, detailed specification for each microcontroller. For, for all the th more than 300, for, uh, for, uh, sorry, for the more than uh, 3,000 or 4,000 microcontrollers, you have uh, a detailed uh, specification available in the PDSC. Uh, and the SVD is a uh, description of the uh, peripherals, the registers, and the field that I mentioned uh, earlier. And uh, so now I will uh, let Corentin tell you uh, how we can use uh, those, those data to provide the BSPs. So now the question is, how can we use, use all that data? So first, uh, we can use a tool that we developed uh, at ADACore called SVD to ADA. So what it does is it takes an SVD file, so in that case, uh, a plain XML file that describes down to each um, field of every register 
um, what its purpose and what the different values of the of the registers are. So, SVD to ADA will take that file and generate some ADA bindings for it. Now, how you how could you uh, interact with the register uh, in C? So in C, you would probably do something like that. So you define your macros. Uh, you have your register that you set at an address, and then with the binary operation, you set uh, the, the mask that you want um, uh, on your register. So it, if it works, it's fine, but it can be kind of unwieldy, and the C-type system is not helping you uh, with it here, not at all. So in ADA, we have what we call, in ADA is Spark Entry, actually, we have what we call representation clauses. So um, here, for example, I, de I describe a type called PinSense, which is an enum, and I can specify its size, so its uh, size as bits, so in our case it has two bit size. For uh, that enum, I set specific values for every value of the enum. And after that, what I can do is I described uh, a type record, so it's actually like a structure in C, and I use the type previously uh, described in the middle of the register to represent a specific register. After that, in uh, my record, I can set the specific bits range for every field of my structure. And at the end, all I have to do is instantiate um, uh, my type IO register with a variable register, and I can set its address uh, like that. With a, like that. Um, and afterward, if I want to disable or enable the sensor, all I have to do is uh, call a register dot thing, and then the value that you want to, to put in there. So what's the advantage? Um, the advantage is that the ADA type system is quite strong. And um, for example, if you want in C to write um, Let's say I have a field that is two bits, and I, and I write by mistake an integer on that. Well, you will write the integer, and there are some problems that will occur. If you try to do something like that in ADA, the compiler will warn you and will tell you it will not work. So that's, that's, uh, that's the advantage here. So now we have some bindings to the peripherals and the registers, uh, but now we still need to solve the problem of the CRT0 and the linker script, how to boot. Here comes uh, my internship project at ADECOR that I started uh, a year and a half ago. Um, it, it's called Startup Gen. And what it does is it generates all that info for you, so the CRT0 and the linker script, from the content in the CMC specs. So uh, in the CMC specs, we, we have a lot of XML files, actually, but we also have another one called a PDSC, which, which describes um, it's really, it's really big, and it describes all the different devices and their, their memories. Um, for example, if there are bootloaders, where they are located. Um, what else? Uh, path to the documentation. Um, so really a ton of stuff. But what interests us here is only really the memory part. So here we have a ROM. So it marks as startup, so the, um, the device will boot on the ROM. And then we have an, uh, a RAM, so with a start address and a size, and at the start is not init initialized. So we have to take care of initializing it ourselves. So from that XML file, we can write a GPR file. GPR is our, uh, not internal representation at ADECO, but it's a, f um, uh, a file format that we use uh, to compile our projects with our um, build system called GPR build. So here we can see that basically I transcribed the content of the XML in GPR form. So as you can see, it's a bit more readable for a human now. And from that GPR file, we can generate, oh, after what, actually, sorry. Uh, what else is good with the GPR file is that you can take care of the, the advantages of that language, the GPR language. And for example, if you have a development board and a production board, you can set different values depending on the variable dev board that you pass as parameter when generating the code. And the code will, uh, will change depending on if you have a dev board or production board. So in that case, the linker script will be different. So now startup gen, okay, thank you. So 
startup gen um, will generate a CRT0 and a linker script. So here is the CRT0, and we can see that um, it's the part where we copy all the all that is supposed to be in data when we when we call the main. Uh, we copy the parts of the data sections from uh, the ROM to the RAM. So it's, uh, it's an assembly loop, and all of that is generated based on the info we have in the CMC specs. Afterwards, so this is part of the, CMC, uh, of the linker script that is generated. And you can see we have a ROM, um, the ROM, the, so the flash and the RAM actually, and we put the text sections in the flash. In our case, every RAM has uh, different data section, BSS sections, all of that. Um, it's because we really want a way to boot rapidly on a board, and if the user wants to customize the linker script, it's easier to tell the user to customize his, li his linker script rather to come up with uh, weird heuristics and weird behaviors to try and infer what the user would want. So, so as I told you, there's a missing link between the XML file and the GPR file. I told you I had to write it. So that's not true, actually. Uh, currently, it's handled by a database, but it's in the dev branch in the repo because it's, it's not finished currently. We want to integrate it um, in an ID. So Fabien told you before that we have an ID called Gnat Studio. Um, and really, the, the point of that uh, internship sub subject was to integrate, um, was to make Startup Gen, so the tool to generate the code, and then to integrate it in an ID so, the, the, so that you would be able to, uh, I want to start developing an ADA on a given board. I click new project, I click uh, a BSP project, and then I select the board that I want to develop on, I click, uh, I click the button, and then I can start developing an ADA, and everything is taken care of for me. So this is the result that we have. Uh, we can basically generate an ADA Spark um, hardware bindings, let's say, so BSP, for any Cortex-M controller that we have in our CMC SPAC uh, data banks, and it also includes how to boot the file, how to, how, sorry, how to boot the board, so the CRT0 and the linker script. So, thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Yes. Okay, so the question is about uh, the, the Rust uh, embedded community that is doing also some, uh, some things with uh, SVD. And so you said they're also patching the SVD to, to fix them. Uh, and so the question is, do we, do we talk with them or do, are we aware of this, uh, of this effort, I guess? Um, so yes, I, we, we have seen, we've, we've seen this, uh, this effort. I talk with uh, some of them saying that, hey, we do the same stuff. Mm. Actually, I think we, st we started a little bit before them uh, and so so far we don't uh, we don't reuse the the SVD patching uh, stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I've talked with uh, some of uh, some of the people from the embedded Rust, and there's uh, there's really um, a common interest here. And uh, I think in particular with uh, so Rust uh, like us is an alternative programming language, uh, and the stuff we deal with here they will have to deal with it. And so potentially what's interesting is to be able to uh, talk to the hardware vendor and make sure they provide good uh, SVD files. No, I think they try to push the patches upstream, but very often... Yeah, yeah. and also what, what's important is that uh, actually SVD is not, uh, is not actually designed to generate code. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, a format for debuggers so you can inspect the, the um, peripherals. Uh, and so it's, it's not it's not the real the intended usage for SVD, and so sometimes they are not very uh, very good. Uh, and also one of the problem I see is that uh, so this is for ARM it's very nice, yeah. uh, but for instance I uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, programming on uh, Risk Five as well, and so I'm I'm trying to push the uh, Risk Five vendors to provide SVD five for their devices, but uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not always easy to. Um, to uh, make uh, 
to explain why this is important. So, yeah. Yes? So the question is the, that we didn't show uh, the implementation for interrupt vectors. Uh, yes, yeah, so actually that's that's a part that we didn't show, but in the GPR file you can uh, specify. So from the uh, PDSC or from the SVD, actually you can you ha you have the list of interrupts, uh, and we also, we also generate uh, we also generate the interrupt vectors and we generate the the vector table in the CRT zero as well. So we didn't show it, but it's uh, it's available. Maybe it's So, uh, so the question is if we if the if the interrupts are handled by the operating system. Um, so depends on how you handle it. So for Cortex M, you always need to have a vector uh, of an interrupt. So what you can do is you can specify the the same uh, handler name for every interrupt, and that would go that would be the the symbol that your Ertos is using. Uh, you have to. You would have to change the GPR file to specify that. Uh, also, what's important is that uh, I guess the, the the main point of this effort is to make it easy to start, yeah. but it will not cover all the possible use case because it's very complex. Uh, and something that I want to mention as well. So, SVD to ADA, of course, is really focused on ADA, but. Uh, the startup gen project uh, can actually be used for uh, for C or for uh, probably for Rust as well. It's uh, it's just a CRT zero and a linker script that's not uh, uh, related to any specific language. Okay. Any more question? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.